All right, this video is part one of three videos where I will be reviewing all of the games of the Cassette 50 charity competition. This was a cassette that was recently released and the competition was held earlier this year to develop small games. To give a quick overview, the Cassette 50 was an infamous collection of games published by Cascade in 1983 and an early example of shovelware marketed on the basis of sheer quantity rather than than the quality or playability of its games. This was a collection that was released way back in 1983, but their games weren't that good. The idea was with this one was to raise the bar to bring out much better games, see what we could do with our modern tools and see if we can improve upon the, the first collection. The basic rules of the competition, pretty much, here's the rules, but pretty much what you had to do was keep your memory below 4096 bytes for assembly language and then for basic around 2k. This cassette is currently available for purchase over on the Phoenixware website and it's about 15 pound. So go check that out. What I've done for this video is I've restricted the gameplay for each game to one minute and 30 seconds to do a quick review for each game and I hope that somehow is interesting and I don't mean to be too harsh on anyone some of these are the very first time I played them but I'm gonna take a look at all the games on the cassette 50 so let's jump into it right now let's start the clock all right first up is amazing quad race which is the game that I made so I'm biased I've showed gameplay of this before but I mean, all you have to do, you, you, can, you, can, you can play with four players because it uses the uh, four player adapter and you just got to race to the opposite side of the screen, navigating the maze. And if you can do that successfully, then you, then you go on into another maze. You have the capability of tying. So f up to all four players can tie a race if you actually make it to the opposite side of the screen at the same, same time. The, if I had to uh, critique my own game, uh, it would be to um, have a single player version. It just simply, uh, at least the way I coded it, it wouldn't have been uh, f uh, feasible to have a four player mode and a single player mode in uh, 4K. But that is my main criticism of my game. It, it, has, a, it has some sound effects. It, 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 it kind of has ramp ups as, as you make it through halfway through the maze. I think it's fun and easy to play. I play with my nieces and we all enjoy playing it, of course, but uh, there is that bias. And so anyway, that is, I think it's one of the only games that supports a four player adapter for all the four joysticks that's uh, on this competition. Anyways, that is Amazing Quad Race. All right, let's check out Arcade Baseball. And right off the bat, I just want you to notice how it's playing, take me off to the ball game. And I've already looked up the instructions. And so you push fire button to throw the ball. And you'll notice that you can throw the ball as often as you want. And you're never thrown out. But then if you want to swing, you use the joystick. I just got a single. You can kind of use it left, right. To sort of aim it where you want. So it's a fairly simple game. I enjoy playing it. And yeah, check it out. It's got a home run. Play it for a minute here. I played this earlier. I got like 20 points. <laughs> so I think it's fairly easy to play. And that brings me into my quick review. I think it's easy to pick up and play. It's fun. I think it's original. It has some pretty good sound effects. It sounds like the crowd's cheering. And I've played this game several times. I've, played, I've come back to it a couple times. So I think it has really good uh, replay value. And if I could improve it, I would want to have it where you could strike out or something like that. Just those types of little improvements. So you can't just throw unlimited uh, ball strikes and not be thrown out. But anyway, I enjoy it. Next up is Astro Crash. 
And I've looked this up. It's really hard to play, but it looks like you can control these asteroids. You kind of want to keep them so they don't go off the screen and you can adjust their movement by the white one is the one you control. You can select by going left and right. And then you hold the one you want, you hold the fire button on the one you want to control. And then you can move it. Although I'm not, oh, oh there. Okay, let's see, like I'm on this one. And I'm pushing X minus one, two, three. So now that asteroid's moving to the left. Do the same thing on this one so it doesn't go off the screen. I think you have to hold it. Any rate, as you can see, I'm struggling with it. It's it's an interesting game concept. Um, it's not really easy to pick up and play, and because of that, it makes not it's not as fun as I like it to be. It is very original. It has a few sound effects, but as far as its replay value, I think it's too hard to play. I I, I wouldn't play it again. Oh, and then check it out. When the game's over, you go right back to this to the screen here. So you have to start it over from scratch, and that's not a good sign. Next up is balloon caves. Press fire to start, and it's by Phase One Hundred One Presents. And I remember this one. So here, and this one's easy to kind of learn how to play. You just make your balloon move left and right and you got to pick up the hit the yellow dots on them oh, and I keep I keep messing up my left and right because I'm used to Neptune lander and it's reversed on Neptune lander but I think if I remember correctly this this game has four levels and and they get challenging because you have to uh, navigate around certain areas the tight spots and stuff and so on and this game does remind me a little bit of neptune lander and it's kind of it's, it's a really fun game Ow. oh so i feel like this game is really easy to pick up and play it's fun it's original in a way it's copying from some elements like uh, neptune lander or, or lunar lander but just the concept of the gravity not not a whole lot. It has some pretty decent sound effects and I like playing it. I like I've played this one more than more than once several times. And the only thing I would do to improve it is to add more levels and of course you couldn't do that cuz this was a 4K competition. And uh but I would like to see it uh a part 2 someday. All right. Next up is Battleships. So with battleships, you move your joystick around and you can kind of push the, the fire button to figure out where the bombs are. And you, have, you can only bomb or push so many times before they go off, but you're trying to destroy the ship. So I destroyed one right there, but you have nine ships to destroy. I only destroyed one. And that's how this game plays. I thought it was more like the board game Battleship, where it would, the ship would be like more than one piece, more than one square. But that's not how this game is. So I've destroyed another ship right there. So really, it's just kind of like you press, pressing randomly, and you figure out, try to figure out where the ships are. But you only have so many bombs. I've never been able to get all the ships destroyed. I played it a couple times. So the ships not destroyed, you lose. So anyway, this game, it's very easy to pick up and play. It's not really very satisfying when you play because it's very difficult. It's, it's a really hard game to master. I think it's pretty original when it comes to the games on this competition. The sound effects, I don't remember. I don't think there were any sound effects. I couldn't hear them. And it's not something that I would play again. All right, next up is Big Time Bugger. This game 
took second place overall in the entire competition. And you can see why. It's really an amazing game. And you, the idea is that you go around, you see that little ampersand? You got to get to that. And there's like, how many? It says nine. It's called a bug. So you have to go around and collect all those bugs. And if you do that, I think you complete the game. I've never successfully done that. And there I died. <laughs> but I have gotten through and gotten the ampersand. Um, so much time do I have? All right. Yeah, so let me, let me try to do that. There's also other places that you can go and explore. Notice how the sound and the music changes as you navigate different areas of the map. So I think a lot of uh, detail went into this. And he uses the ROM of the Commodore 64 for this. It's not procedurally generated. So I think it's an easy to pick up and play game. It's, it's an amazing accomplishment what they were able to do in, in 4K. And it's fun. It's, you get to explore a, a world and, you know, it's original. There's no other game like this in the competition. Really good sound effects and music, although they do get uh, old after a little while. And it's fun to play, um, to pick up and play multiple times over and over again. That's why I got number two in the competition. Next up is Bloop. And I played this one a couple of times. And so what you have to do is uh, get your little fuzzy guy. I forget what he's called. A hedgehog. or you got to get him to touch the, the plus signs. The yellow plus signs is the goal without touching the blue things. And so it bounces around and it's kind of sh uh, shaky, wormy. Um... Really a, a nice feat of programming the way the way it's been done. I'm really terrible at it, but um, it's fun to play. It's addictive. Let me see. It didn't place in the top ten, but I think it should have. And I think the my max score has been about mm, 28. The the more you can plus signs you can catch in a row without touching anything else, the higher your score will kind of go. It'll multiply up. Oops, and let's see if I can get one here. So anyway, that is Bloop. I'm really terrible at it. It's fun. I, I pretty much said that. It's easy to pick up and play. Very original. I love how the the graphics swirl and it has a it has these effects, like when you die and when the game starts over, and how the Bloop shimmers right there. So it's it's really good. It has really good sound effects. It's fun to play, and the only way I could think of to improve it is to figure out a way, see how the score and the hearts uh, move up and down. If there was a way to stabilize that, maybe with some sprites above the border. But anyway, that's Bloop. All right, let's check out Boom by Prince Phase 101. Hit bouncing ball before the time runs out. Okay, I remember this one. I believe, if I'm not mistaken, this might be a basic entry. So you hit the space bar to try to hit the yellow ball. And if you miss, you lose a life. Ooh. Hey, this is the best I've done. So it's a pretty simple game. Um, I take it back. I don't think it was done in basic anymore. Let me see. Yeah. But it's a simple game. It's easy to uh, pick up and play. It's more on the simplistic side. It's fairly uh, fun, probably more for the younger kids because it's so simple to play. And I, it's it's the originality. I don't know. Is this? It's it's not much to it. There are a few sound effects in the game, and I've. It's not something that I would come back to to replay uh, unless there was some more dynamics um, added into it. So. But I, I do like how it has a high score and the score. Um, so it keeps track of how well you do in the game. And I always enjoy when coders take the time to, to develop those and the title screens. The next game is called Box Nightmare. By Charles Gray, I remember this one. So what you have to do is just line up your box to the box 
to the colored box that randomly appears. Oh, wasting time. Doesn't really matter because once you get your box in the box, you get your time reset back to 96 or 99. And that's one of the things that I think he, that could have been improved is to somehow um, utilize your time more so that you don't always get reset back to 99, but maybe reset add 10 seconds back or something like that. So the game doesn't continue to go on. I believe I read it goes on for like 240 matches until you until the game ends, but I've never had the patience to to take it that far. But anyway, this is... Box Nightmare. By Charles Gray. It's really easy and fun to play. It's, you know, it's simple. I think it's good for little kids to get their hand-eye coordination. It has some really good sound effects. The graphics are cool. And I've played it several times and I probably would play it again. Um, I just think there should be a few minor improvements. Next up is Breakdance. And this one's pretty cool too. It took ninth place overall. And it has a training mode. So you can kind of figure out up is this, left does that, right does this move, down goes down. So once you think you have that memorized, left, right, up, down, fire, fire does a spin, you can play a game. It's kind of like Simon. You can go left, left down, left fire, left fire, left fire, right, I think. Left fire, right. Oh, I messed that one up. So that's game over. <laughs> so that's how you play this game. It's it's easy and fun to play. It's easy to learn because it has a training mode. I'm not. It's one of the few games if, if there's any others on here that has a training mode, which is cool. And uh, I think it's original, has some, the music playing is cool, that's playing in the background. Um, it's, it's fun to replay and start over and start, try it from the beginning. Um, anyhow, I, yeah, if, I, if it, I think it could be improved by not ending the game right away just if it just didn't end just let you start and like continue from that point and maybe you know give you a second chance that would be kind of cool but um anyhow that is breakdance breakdance here took ninth place uh, on the top 10 which was pretty cool and i just wanted to mention that now let's check out bs let's, let's start the timer by Space Moguls. And as I recall, this is sort of like, uh, was it called Minesweeper? But I really like the way the, the maps clear. And you move your, I'm assuming it's a lawnmower, you move it around and, and you have the bombs. If you touch one of those bombs, I think the game ends. Let's try it. Well, let's not try it just yet. Got some time. But you see how it has the little numbers. So you kind of go around. Uh, so far, I've been lucky. I haven't hit a bomb. Oh, there. Okay, I hit a bomb right there. So then it goes through and displays. And that's BS, yeah. That's the, that's the game. I think this is a really cool game. It's fun. It's easy to pick up and play. There's probably some things I don't. I'm um, definitely some things I don't understand about it. I'm assuming it's just like my Minesweeper. So I mean, it's kind of like a port. I wouldn't call it necessarily particularly the original. I think the programming is well done. How it clears everything around the dots and has really good sound effects. And I've played it several times, so I really kind of like it. So that is BS. Let's check out Centered. 
by Charles Gray. Press a button, joystick to, oh yes, yes. So all you have to do on this one is stay within the bounds in the left and right, don't hit the walls. It's just a matter of remembering to press left or right and being fast about it. So I see I hit the wall there and then it starts over. And I was gonna see, yeah, this game looks like it was written in basic and some of the, I think the basic games have to be limited to 2K. And uh, there's a few on this competition that were in, in basic and I apologize if I didn't cap catch all those earlier, but, but yeah, this game's kind of cool. It's fun to play. It's easy to learn. It's, it's kind of original. I mean, there's not much to it. And it has sound effects even for in basic. It, I've played it several times. It's, it's fun to come back and play. And it even has your last score. It doesn't have a high score. But since I have a little extra time, I'm just going to keep playing until I run out of time. But yeah, this is fun. It's uh, It gets hard. It gets really hard, but I do like Centered. It's a really cool game. Next is called Circles. And let's see. Oh, I remember this. I have a hard time with this one. I might need to... I might need to play this one offline because I don't remember how to play this. Oh, okay. You connect up the like the ones that have the same colors. Sometimes those colors are close, like the greens and blues are really close. You can't tell. Yeah, so I guess you go around doing this. I'm um, really the gameplay on this is confusing to me. I, I I know you connect light colors. We can only connect two at a time. It's fairly easy to play uh, if you know how to play it. But I really I w I've played it several times <laughs> or a couple of times. I feel like a moron because I can't figure it out. So I I don't have a lot of fun playing it. it I I would call it original and it I, I don't think it has any sound effects. So, I mean, well, very, okay, yeah. And, uh, I don't know, that's circles for you. All right, next up is Copycat. All right, yeah, this one is from OSK. I'm gonna hit the space bar. Just play. And this is basically like Simon. MZ. M C A C A A. So you see, we're playing Simon here. M C A A A. So it comes down to this is a memory game. You just got to memorize. Let's just see if I mess up. I'm gonna pick K. It doesn't like that. Takes away from your time. No. M Z A. So anyway, this is copycat copycat. It's a fairly simple, easy to play learn easy to learn game. It kinda is like the Atari Touch Me or um, that's those types of games where you just memorize patterns like Simon I mean I was a kid I loved these types of games but now they don't really rock or float my boat anymore but but they are fun for uh, young people fairly original good sound effects and if you like this type of game they're fun to play over and over again 
So let's try defuse. Now this one is hard, um, as I recall, you hit the space bar to start the fuse, and then the space bar to predict when the fuse is gonna go off. And then if you don't predict it correctly, the game ends just like it did. I pushed the space bar one too many times, and that's kind of a, a problem with the design of this particular game. So somewhere around, usually it's around 25, 30 seconds, the bomb goes off. Sometimes before that, though, yeah. <laughs> so I, I, I have a hard time with predicting when it's gonna, when the bomb's gonna go off. And I so far have never been able. I've played this fifteen times. I've never been able to successfully defuse the bomb here. But I, I want to say this game is easy to pick up and play, and it's. I don't, I don't consider it necessarily fun, but it's fun to try to figure it out to see if we can defuse the bomb. Last two two times here, I blew it. <laughs> I, one of the things I don't like about it is how it goes back to, you have to restart the program. <laughs> it, it resets the computer rather than just starting over. It does have some good sound effects. I've never been able to get to the, uh, to, to, to defuse the bomb. And uh, I guess you could say it has good replay value, but imagine this being on a tape and having to rewind and started over. <laughs> this uh, whole idea of that uh, would have been a disastrous. All right, next up is don't block the box. Don't block the box. Oh yeah, I like this game. All right, I've played this a couple of times and basically you, you wanna prevent traffic accidents. There's been games like that before. Up and down to, to control the northbound traffic up once, down, and then uh, let's see, up, stop, see how I stopped that car, down, up, up, yeah, so anyway, I caused an accident there. So the idea of this is up and down can stop uh, northbound traffic and left and right can stop and pause east and westbound traffic. I'm just not very good at it. It does, this one really teaches you hand-eye coordination and uh, if you get lucky, you can get away with not doing anything hardly. If you uh, just get lucky with a, a random, the randomness of the game. I think this is a, a really neat game. I love the graphics. It's fun to play and uh, it's easy to learn. It's original. I mean, there are other traffic games that are, that are out there, but for a 4K game, this is really cool. Has some decent sound effects and um, there's not a whole lot I would improve maybe um, the high score is way is up there on the right. If that's the high score, one nine zero 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 zero. I think that's impossible. <laughs> I really like to see someone good at this um, to beat that. But uh, any rate, I I enjoy this game and I think it's pretty cool. Next up is called eggs. Oh yeah, so in this one, you line it up with the broken eggs and you push the fire button. The broken one is the one with the lines through it. The X's are not broken. See, it crashes or the game ends when you when you push the button on the X's. So you let those ones go. Basically, the only ones that I've seen that you're supposed to uh, click is the one with the line through. Not the hearts, not the X's, not anything else. It's just the ones with the lines like this. So that's how, I think that's how you play the game. It's the only way I've been able to have success playing the game. But it's kind of neat. It has pretty good graphics, sound effects are really good for this game. And I think it's easy to pick up and play and learn. Uh, equal signs, I don't think you can do. Yep, yeah, nope, you don't do equal signs. It's just the ones with the lines through it. I like, I appreciate how it has a high, uh, or your best, basically, is your high score up there on the top right. And I think it's a fun game. Probably would have been neat to have uh, different levels or maybe adjust the speeds if it could have, if it gets faster. I'm not sure. I haven't been good enough to get past, to get that good of a score, so. But anyway, this game is called Eggs, and it's pretty cool. Next up is 
floaty balloon. And by syntax, syntax error software. Oh yes, oh, yes, I forgot about this one. You just, you control this solely with your fire button. All you do is push the button. It's like uh, giving helium into the balloon. And you just gotta try to avoid running into the walls. I'm not really good at this. There's, oh yeah, see if you let go too long, you 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 go smash right into the right into the environment and the game ends. And then it would have been probably would have been cool to have your your best distance displayed somewhere, um, maybe right underneath distance, so you can kind of gauge how well you've done in the past. And I, I like the scrolling. It's it's one of the few games in the competition that does have scrolling. And oh yeah, and it's fun. I think it's a fun game. It's 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 it, oh it's it's a uh, yeah. I think it's fun. It's entertaining once you learn how to play it. It, it would have been nice if they had some sound effects somewhere. I think there are when you crash. I think, but like when you're pressing fire, there. There could have been some sound effects. And this is the best I've ever done. <laughs> I cannot believe I'm talking and getting this good a score at the same time. Anyway, that... Oh, five more seconds. Can I last? Can I get to a thousand? No, oh, no sound. No sound there. Floaty balloon. Next up is our frog arg. Frog arg. Frogarg. I believe this is yeah C64 Mark and oh yeah this one's hard. Well if if you know how to play it's not that hard but it's kind of like Frogger. See that arrow at the top? I can move that left and right and then I can control the speed of the cars to slow them down or get them out of the way so that your frog can get over, um, get across the way. Uh, there we go. Oh, so I ran him over. Um, this game is hard. This game is really hard. Um, and it's stressful. <laughs> you know, like, in my opinion, game uh, video games shouldn't be that stressful. They should be relaxing. Ah, uh, but... Anyway, yeah, this is C64 Mars. It's one of his first games that he did, I think, for this for this competition. And um, I'm not crazy about the color scheme, the, the the light green grass, and and then the green frog in the middle. Uh, yeah, but anyway, it's fairly original. I mean, he took a, he took a game like Frogger and made it his own with the, this design, and kind of kind of turned it inside out. Instead of you controlling the frog, you control the traffic. And uh, it has good sound effects. It's fun to play, uh, to keep coming back to. And there's not really much I would do to, to improve it. Um, so anyway, that's Frog Arg. Frog Arg.